Hello, welcome again to a session of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, a program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy from Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. Today's case, another GYN case adventure, it's a 32 year old woman who has had some uh, recent onset of menstrual irregularities and she's found to have a very sizable mass uh, in uh, one adnexa. So uh, surgical exploration is indicated, uh, and this is a, a section uh, showing you the gross uh, image of this lesion. Uh, you can see it has a, a pale yellow appearance, uh, some uh, maybe fleshy or tan tissue, fairly lobulated in some dilated areas, uh, maybe with a follicle or two-like structure and it pretty well fills the entire uh, lesion, several centimeters in size. Uh, a frozen section is requested to sort of see what needs to be done uh, with uh, this lesion. And here we can see on frozen section that this follicular pattern is quite nicely repeated here with multiple uh, cystic spaces and a diffuse uh, pattern of cells in between. Um, as we can look at higher power, uh, these cells uh, don't appear to be forming epithelial structures, um, and these follicular structures uh, are uh, dilated and not lined by any uh, epithelial cells per se. Higher magnification, we see that the cells have uh, you know, some enlargement of the nuclei um, and uh, variability here and there. Uh, we might see uh, maybe a mitosis or two in some areas uh, of this lesion, but just sort of a diffuse pattern of sheets of cells. A lot of cytoplasm here, and sort of pale cytoplasm, obviously, uh, staining uh, plays into that, but uh, uh, a lot of spacing between these cells. So uh, <clears throat> in frozen section, uh, a diagnosis like uh, sex cord stromal tumor, uh, possibly granulosa cell tumor or something like that might be uh, rendered on the basis of this diffuse pattern, the follicular structures, abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, uh, and then we'll wait to see uh, what uh, permanent sections might uh, reveal. So is, is this a tumor that's uh, producing a hormonal effect causing the menstrual abnormalities? Well, certainly could be. Uh, as we think about the ovarian tumors that do produce hormonal effects, uh, top on the list would be, of course, the coma, most frequent and uh, so forth. Uh, but granulosa cell tumors uh, can uh, fall into that category as well. Sertoli Leydig cell tumor, we of course know that uh, Leydig cells uh, uh, may produce uh, androgens. Uh, steroid cell tumors, uh, these uh, hyalur uh, lesions can also produce uh, uh, tum uh, cell uh, tumor, excuse me, can also produce hormones, uh, more typically estrogenic uh, than uh, androgenic, uh, whereas uh, these may be a little bit more like the other type, uh, whereas uh, also gestational neoplasms can uh, result in hormone production, most commonly HCG or uh, alpha fetoprotein and so forth that uh, usually don't have quite the same dramatic effect on uh, menstruation. Um, and then uh, some of the germ cell tumors like yolk sac tumor or struma, of course, by definition are hormone producers. The interesting thing though is of course that just about any ovarian tumor can produce hormonal effects as a secondary or paraneoplastic uh, response of the stromal cells. Uh, so uh, the pure fact of uh, hormone uh, production or disturb disturbance in hormonal uh, cycling and so forth is not a uh, predictor of any particular histologic type. So here's a nice uh, section of our permanent uh, tissue from the frozen section. We again see this uh, follicular uh, architecture and sort of a diffuse pattern. Here they look, here they look a little bit more uh, cellular and uh, a little bit larger uh, type cells. Uh, the intervening tissue we see. Uh, here we're still seeing some of the frozen section artifact in these cells, but we can see there's fairly abundant cytoplasm. Um, and so we are not uh, deceived in our uh, frozen section of Im impression that this was uh, probably some sort of sex cord stromal tumor, uh, but uh, definitive diagnosis is probably gonna be pretty hard on this uh, frozen tissue uh, that's been processed by permanent section. 
So let's take a look at uh, another section of the, of the case that has more routine fixation. Here we can again see these large follicular structures, uh, some filled with fluid, others emptied out, um, and a diffuse pattern uh, in a somewhat vaguely nodular uh, pattern. Um, we note the coloration, that there is sort of a uh, amphiphilia, if, we will, if you will, to this uh, lesion. Um, the nuclei still have this uh, fairly uniform round appearance. Um, we do not see nuclear grooves here as we look around. Um, and we do see a fair number of uh, mitotic figures as well as maybe small areas of necrosis um, in this lesion. So um, our diagnosis uh, after uh, uh, scouring this, the sections of this, looking for any other heterologous elements, any epithelial component, uh, any evidence of uh, biphasic appearance, um, in this uh, particular setting, our diagnosis was that of a juvenile granulosa cell tumor. So juvenile granulosa cell tumor is uh, typically seen in somewhat younger adults, usually second and third decade, occasionally into the fourth. Uh, it's typically a fairly fleshy tumor with uh, cystic and follicular areas, and usually has a diffuse sheet-like pattern of growth, as we see in here. Uh, there's typically abundant cytoplasm that may be mostly eosinophilic or slightly amphiphilic, as we've seen in ours. Mitoses can be found uh, uh, routinely in these lesions, um, and the nuclei are round without evidence of nuclear grooves, uh, which differentiates it from the adult-type uh, tumors. Uh, behavior of these tumors is uh, fairly similar to uh, adult-type granulosa cell tumors. Um, so. Uh, that is not a critical distinction, but it is uh, nice and does fit better with the uh, uh, clinical pathologic uh, features of the case. So our final sign out was juvenile granulosa cell tumor. Um, of course, uh, this was a stage 1A tumor, no evidence of spread elsewhere uh, after inspection. And so the patient has a, uh, a small, but uh, not insignificant risk of uh, local recurrence uh, intra-abdominal and so forth uh, over the course of uh, a considerable uh, length of time. Well, thank you for joining us for our uh, uh, another of our uh, Happy New Year cases. Uh, we hope that uh, the uh, uh, debt or the uh, uh, singet uh, will bring you uh, uh, good, good luck and good fortune. Uh, we certainly feel blessed, and uh, again, thank you for joining us. We hope that the road ahead will be pleasant and smooth for you, and if you like this, that you'll subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, um, and please uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, directly or with con comments. We are always uh, eager to uh, hear your thoughts and uh, feedback on topics you'd like to see covered, questions you may have that we didn't cover in the video, uh, or other, uh, other matters that you'd like to address. So until next time, thanks for joining me.